Hello and welcome to the third of five Greylog Tech Talks. Today we're going to talk about insider threats and how you can use what you already have, Greylog, to help reduce risk in this area. Hi, this is Brad Six, Technical Product Evangelist at Greylog, and I'm here with Mark Brooks, Vice President of Customer Solution. As a reminder, you can enter questions in the Q&A window at any time. Since we only have 15 minutes today, we're going to go back to you with uh, any answers via email. Uh, the recordings can be found at the URL on your screen, and you can check your inbox for follow-up emails uh, with the link. So, Mark, why would you get? Uh, why don't you get us started with a quick summary of challenges we're talking about uh, uh, to reduce some of these issues uh, associated with these insider risk threats? Thanks, Brad. Um, I, th I think the operative word there is quick. Uh, for for those of you that are in a security role, um, you know, a fifteen minute talk around insider threats is, uh, is not quick. As a matter of fact, I've spent many hours presenting on uh, the, the threat profile and, and the things that you need to pay attention to in your environment. So we're gonna, we're gonna narrow this down just a bit. Um, it, it really comes down to how you define the insider threat, whether you're talking about um, the pawns that are associated with bad actor external behavior, or, or just the turn cloaks that are malicious behavior in, inside an organization. But, but I think the challenge is exactly the same. Um, there's, there's lots of changes and, and IT ends up in, at the pivot point of decisions that are made by an organization and how to fulfill the policy and changes that are necessary in order to protect from risky behavior that, are, that happens within that change or changes. Um, the things that we deal with today in, in COVID in the form of, um, you know, furloughs and reductions in force and, and, and reduction in business practice, um, th those things impact IT. And for those of us that leverage uh, log as the central point for collection and distribution of data that we make decisions on, um, you know, therein lies the pivot point of how we make those decisions based on the challenges that we face. The, the things that we're going to talk about today, some of the things that we've covered in the past, um, looking at accounts and, and how you manage and, and monitor account behavior, um, and, and then really getting into how do we pivot back to the, the specifics of the, the custom attributes within an organization so that you can be focused on data that's relevant to the risk that you're facing. And that includes shared accounts and, and fraudulent type activities. All, all of this rolls back to though, the fact that you know, bad actors, hackers are paying attention to so, social media and they're watching for uh, changes in employment status on LinkedIn and they're, lock, they're looking for accounts that have ev elevated privileges within organizations to try to leverage that access and that privilege in order to gain a foothold and, and ultimately either hold that organization at ransom in the form of ransomware um, or exfil data in order to sell on the black market. So the, the threat is real. Um, the, the challenge is very, very vast and 15 minutes is definitely not enough time to, uh, to, to cover all of, all of this, but we're gonna focus on a few features and functions that I, I think will help make your make your life as a gray log administrator a, a little bit easier. Okay, so if we're focused on monitoring uh, the deliberate actions of by insiders, uh, where should gray log users get started? Mm. This, is, uh, this is something that we struggle with every day and, and I, I relate it to tracking a bear through the woods. Uh, if, if you, I've, I've used sports analogies in the past and I've told that, you know, not everybody relates to sports analogies. So I'm going to use a hunting analogy this time. Um, tra tracking a bear is, is, is very dependent upon the tracker and the environment and the bear. You know, what, what attributes of, are they leaving that you can track? Uh, and, and for logs and tracking insider threats, it really comes down to relevant data, data specifically. And, and the operative word here being relevant in the form of there's lots of different data elements that you should be considering as far as collecting and leveraging in the risk decisions that you're making within your organization. Um, the idea that you, you can have a variety of data sources, both raw data collection from applications 
and operating systems and devices, as well as a, a layered security approach that I'm gonna finish with in this particular section in the form of security tools and visibility to um, very explicit security risk within an environment. You know, Gray, Graylog gives you a lot of capabilities to collaborate within your teams and organization so that you're sharing data, that, you're, that you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time when it comes to how you're making risk decisions in Graylog in the form of visualizations and reporting and, and very explicitly you know, pivoting on the very bottom here from alerts to, to some sort of root cause analysis, leveraging the, the custom data within your environment in order to help influence that risk decision. Um, if you do in fact have a, a security, um, layered security mindset, I, I love to show this slide. It's, it's my oh crap slide. This is from, um, from the end of the year. This is the cyber landscape of all of the security tools that you can put in place in order to help give you that visibility that you're looking for, both, both north, north south visibility for bad actors as well as east west vis visibility for internal um, behavior and act uh, and that bad actors. Um, the the net of it is you you can you can deploy one of all of these tools and all of these categories and still not be secure. What what you really need is a collection mechanism for the output of these tools. Um, or the analytics that's associated with these tools in, in order to help influence your risk decision. Some of that sounds a bit like SIM, and there are SIM elements that are associated with that. Some organizations in their defense and depth strategy deploy a full SIM as, as part of the mechanism for making those decisions. Um, but, you know, again, it, it comes back to data and not just the collection of data, but how you're going to evaluate that data, what you're going to do with it on the output. And, and that's where, that's one of the greatest strengths of Graylog is regardless of the data that you have in your environment, whether that's, you know, source, raw source data from operating systems and applications or devices or um, source data from um, external other security tools, um, either, either um, IDS or IPS or endpoint management and, and endpoint protection systems, um, we can collect all of that data help organize and make sense of that data, and then even output that data to other technologies, another SIM or a SOAR, in order to better leverage that data in additional risk decisions for the business. So it, it, it starts with data, and, and it's making sure that you have access to the right data, and then what you do and how you make decisions on that data is ultimately how you're going to respond uh, how effectively you're going to respond to incidents and events, security events that occur within your environment. If you look at um, security investigations, uh, all investigations start with a forensic component where they evaluate what data you have in your environment. And al almost all investigations end with, here is an additional set of data that you must collect in your environment to in, in order to better respond to these incidents. And, and as part of the data conversation, we need to be thoughtful and respectful about the data that we have access to our fingertips and how to leverage that in logging decisions. Um, and and Graylog makes it easy, both from a, a source perspective as well as a cost perspective in order to collect more data and give you better visibility for better risk decisions in your environment. Okay, so once you have the data collected, uh, where should our customers begin their focus? Um, uh, or focus their attention on the inside threats? Yeah, good, good question as well. We, we, we've spent some time over the last two tech talks setting the stage for this. And, and some of that is where we monitor at the perimeter at the firewall and the VPN access. Um, some of it has been in, in the form of monitoring user behavior, especially users that have elevated privilege within your environment. Um, the, the point of those sessions has been you have to have a foundation. If you don't know, if, if you don't have an ability to, to fall back to, here's what I know about an environment, about my environment, specifically about elevated user uh, privilege, specifically about um, the details associated with actions that you need to investigate, um, you're, you're kind of behind the eight ball, which is why we've run those sessions first. Um, and, and there's good information in those sessions. I highly recommend that you go back. I'm, I'm not gonna revisit all of this material, except to say 
that you know we we have some content that's coming out specifically around authentication uh, and and Windows sources to help get you started down the path of monitoring user behavior. Um, but spending time up front in defining the risk that you're concerned with in your environment, um, especially as it relates to internal and external compliance, those sources that are in scope or out of scope, will help you determine the risk decisions that you make when there are incident or, or suspicious activities that happen in the environment that you need to, that you need to respond to. And, and I, the culmination of that in previous sessions comes down to alerting. So there's, there's an ability to give you dashboards and visualizations, but at the end of the day, nobody spends all of their time, maybe today because we're all at home and, and working remotely, but we don't spend a whole lot of time looking at dashboards. Alerting is the pivot point for us in, in order to help make sense of the things that are of risk and that we need to pay attention to. And, and in this case, we're looking at you know, VPN connections that exist outside of a geolocation in order to notify us to determine if maybe we need to go and take action against this particular behavior. Uh, it's all great material, Mark, uh, especially on the alerting side. So how can customers incorporate their uh, workforce variables into Graylog's output? That's, so ultimately that's why I'm here. I get to see being customer focused in our organization um, I get to see how our customers are leveraging the features and functions that are associated with Greylog. And, and I think the two least leveraged and probably, in my opinion, as a security professional, the most valuable features and functions that exist in Greylog um, are the least leveraged in our customer base. Um, the first thing that I'm going to talk about are dynamic lists. So if, if you're familiar with lookup tables where, where as part of a pipeline process, we can break out of that process in order to go look up either enhancement data or decision data in a table um, in, in order to help facilitate the, the decisions that we make in the pipeline process. We do a very similar thing today outside of a security feed in the form of custom dynamic lists that, uh, that customers can define in order to help alleviate some of the alert fatigue that's associated with uh, security tool output. Um, in, in this case, I've, I've defined a parameter where I have a list of former employees and I'm looking for uh, access behaviors, authentication behaviors that are associated with anybody that's on that particular list. So uh, I'm in, in this case, it's SSH. Somebody attempts to SSH, that, that event alone doesn't trigger an alert. But if that event comes from a user that's on this former employee's dynamic list that I'm gonna be updating pretty regularly out of either Active Directory or my HR system, wherever that data is sourced for your organization, now I've got a very explicit risk that's associated with, I, I know, that somebody that's on that former employees list should not be SSHing into my environment. They might be a turn cloak of somebody that's being malicious in my environment. They, they might have been a pawn to, to a scheme from an external actor that's trying to leverage their account to get in. But, but either way, that risk is pretty high and I'm, I'm narrowing my alert focus on things in this particular case that, uh, that I need to respond to in a, in a very quick, and, and, uh, and, and um, definitive uh, fashion. There's lots of capabilities around lookup tables. I, I love leveraging lookup tables for uh, when, when we note um, sources that are in and out of scope of compliance as a means to determine what additional actions that I need to take if an event that I'm interested in is happening on a, on a device or a source that's in scope for my compliance efforts. This also relates to policy violations. Um, and, and it's not just, is it on the list? It can be, or it's not on the list. Um, so there's, there's positive and negative, and it's for any normalized field that comes out of the pipeline process. The other feature that I see that's not leveraged very often in our customer base are, is our correlation engine. This, is, this has been briefly talked about in the past two sessions in the form of taking event data either from, from a single event and, and leveraging multiple fields with that event to correlate data, 
or across multiple events in order to correlate uh, a, a, an alert outside of uh, multiple sources, bringing that out and, and looking for things that are of interest within your environment. Um, in, in this case, I'm looking for somebody that's leveraging escalated privileges in Linux. And, and then while they're leveraging that privilege, they're also creating a user. Um, tends, to, tends to lead to bad behavior. Another one that I, I, I like to see is somebody that's either logging in as a service account and clearing, trying to clear an event log if that's part of your policy to be allowed by a service account. Um, but correlating those things together for a high fidelity alert output that requires response. And, and ultimately, um, you know, the correlation rule is very simple to use in the form of we use the same search criteria that we leverage across dashboards and, and, uh, and how we filter and cull data at the search window um, in, in order to build that successful output. Uh, we've got some correlation rules that are coming out with the content that's gonna be released at the end of the month. And, and hopefully those can be leveraged to help you better define correlation events in your environment. But we also have uh, some, some recorded content uh, on our website that walks you through the process of building those correlation rules and, and how to define that, that high fidelity output that you're looking for from a logging environment, especially as it's related to in, internal or insider activities that you're most concerned with for, for your organization. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that's some great information. Um, insider threats are a major concern for every organization. Um, I hope the information that Mark presented today has been useful and has provided some guidance on uh, how Greylog can help reduce insider threats in your environment. If you have questions, please send them to uh, techtalks at greylog.com, and you can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Reddit. Uh, remember, there are two additional uh, Tech Talks uh, next week and the following week. Uh, we are going to cover collaborating uh, to improve availability, root cause analysis on the 14th of May, threat hunting techniques for today's biggest threats on the 21st of May. So look for an invitation, and we hope to see you at the uh, next Tech Talk. Thank you very much.